Hey everyone, uh, Pat Belvo here. It is Wednesday, the 29th of April, 2020. Uh, this is a follow-up to the last video I posted last night, which was, it was the tail end of the Mel Torme, Maureen McGovern thing. I played a cut off of a cassette I had uh, that the sound man recorded. It was a rough, rough recording mix. Um through the board, the soundboard, and it was recorded at the Close Memorial Hall, C-L-O-W-E-S, Memorial Hall, on the campus of Butler University in Indianapolis, Indiana, March 12th, 1992. Um, so I said there was a quick second part to the whole, oh, that well, we segued into a Rob McConnell thing, because Rob McConnell and Mel Torme uh, recorded an album together a number of years ago that I made reference to. So that's how I segued into the Rob McConnell thing. The video I posted last night was basically part one of the whole Rob McConnell thing. Um, this is a very, very quick part two. It's going to be very quick. It happened the same night when I was playing in a small group with Rob. Uh, it was Rob on valve trombone, uh, myself on tenor. Um, Don Wilston, who has moved back to Toronto a number of years ago playing piano. Uh, on bass, it was Mike Lent from Edmonton, and on drums was John DeWall from here in Calgary. And we played at the Chaos Cafe, uh, which has not existed for many, many years. Chaos was located for the Calgary folks that maybe don't remember or don't know. Chaos Cafe was on 17th Avenue Southwest, right across from Western Canada High School. Um, and this would have been, I would have been 28 or 29 years old, I believe, when this happened. So this would have been mid to late 90s, mid 90s. So this is part two of what happened the same night that he was throwing ice at me when we were playing Just Friends. You'll review that video so you understand what I mean when I say that, just so you know. But maybe see that video first and then come back to this one. But anyway, here it goes. I'll, this is what uh, I had posted, and it's quite short, so... Same night as the Just Friends ice-throwing incident, Rob completely set me up, unbeknownst to me at the time. We had just finished playing a song, okay, and my screen went dead. Okay, by the way, there's an expletive in this, so just so you know, expletive warning, here it comes. Same night as the Just Friends ice-throwing incident, Rob completely set me up, unbeknownst to me at the time. We had just finished playing a song. He put his valve trombone on his horn stand, looked right at me, and in his loud, gruff voice says, Call a tune. And pretty much just like that, but probably five to ten times louder. Because we were on opposite ends of the stage. Of course he catches me completely off guard. And there I am trying to think of something. And the first thing that blurts out of my mouth is, I'll remember April. He looks at me with a scowl and says, loud enough that much of the audience could hear it, Fuck, I hate that tune. Sunny side of the street in C. One, two... One, two, three, four. And he started, they launched into sunny side of the street. I think I stood there with a blank look on my face for about 30 seconds, processing what had just happened. And then I have here, hee hee, so this one's for you, Rob. And I have Chet Baker, <laughs> this posting on Facebook, Chet Baker playing I'll Remember April. Now, with all my, within all my videos that I've been posting here on, on my channel, there is one of me down below somewhere dated April 14th, 2020, where I play I'll Remember April. And as I'm introducing it, I say, this one I'm going to dedicate to a trombone player named Rob, and you know who you are. I mean, Rob's passed away, of course, but that's, that's, that's the implication. That's what I'm implying when I say uh, this one is for a trombone player named Rob, and you know who you are. That's why I played that. And I, I could have said anything. I could have said sunny side of the street and C. And he probably would have come up with something else and said the same thing. So anyway, yeah. And uh, as I mentioned in the last video, speaking to Guido Basso about throwing ice at me and stuff. And that's when Guido said, oh, that means he likes you. And I told him about this too. And he said, oh yeah, he set you up. He's just having fun with you. He likes you. I'm like, okay, I, I, if that's what that is, I don't want to get on his bad side, which I didn't luckily. But anyway, so that's that story. That's uh, like I said, short and sweet and to the point. So anyway, um, that was a lot of fun. Although at the time I was somewhat traumatized because, uh, like, I think I have a fairly off the wall and, and, uh, and, um, 
like a you know a, a broad sense of humor shall we say but <laughs> i don't know i did i wasn't picking up on it i guess back then but okay i look back and it's 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 a good story anyway whatever and it was cool to rub shoulders with rob mcconnell you know i mean he had probably the top big band in the country certainly one of them for sure and you know multiple juno winner i think he won some grammys too so it was kind of neat great composer arranger just some people just couldn't take him and i tried i was just you know being a good side man and doing my thing so yeah but anyway that's all for that one hope you enjoyed that one that was uh i look back now and have a good laugh every once in a while but it was a little bit traumatizing at the time but anyway all good that's why i got gray hair here see that's the thing right just stuff like that that's what that's what does it right so, anyway hope you're all doing well and uh have a great day and we'll talk soon okay bye